This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we are back. What is up, bro? You recording? You good? Yeah, it looks good here on my end. Testing one, two, three. Yeah, we're all good. What's all up, right. everybody? Welcome to the Pete and Sebastian Show. Pete Corielli broadcasting from Fer for for Donia. Myself, Sebastian from Los Angeles. We've been doing this now eight years. If you're brand new to the show, welcome. We haven't done this. We haven't done this in a while where we're welcoming new listeners. Okay, it's good. It's good. We don't do. Yeah. We don't communicate with the yeah. listeners much anymore. You know, we just talk. No, about- no, no. So if you're listening for the first time, the format of the show, two guys basically talking about their personal, professional lives. Not not a guest in sight. <sighs> Haven't had a guest on this show in three years. That's why we're uh, uh, at 151 on Apple Tunes. Uh, right. but, Lou said we were breaking know. the hunch, man. We're always breaking oh. the hunch. Who knows we got, where we're at? Well, by the way, we got to get Watt back on. I'm trying to figure out the technology well, what we're doing here to do the three way, you know? Yeah, he'd got to get a video camera. It's a whole different. It's a whole different game oh, man, with man. Uh, with this. Let me ask you. Speaking of Watt and football, yeah, would you rather have? Would you rather go to the Super Bowl or would you rather have a Super Bowl party? Um, it depends who's playing in the Super Bowl, but I think I'd I'd, I'd bend the one, so I think I'd rather. I don't want to have one. I'd rather go to a Super Bowl party in my town. Man, none of it, bro. None of it. I've been to the none Super Bowl. Unless the Jets are there or what, I'm not interested. And then uh, I watch it at home with Jackie. If it's a good game, I stick to it. If it's a, sh- a suck game, I split and watch something else. Why? What about you? I mean, if, once the Jets are out, which is always, then it's just I handpick what I'm watching with it. Gotcha. I... I was, uh, it's in Los Angeles this year. So let's say if it was in New York, uh, in your own backyard, would that make any difference whether you went to the game or not? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I would, man. So, would. You want to go to the Super Bowl? Of course it, it would. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I've never been to a Super Bowl before. Oh, then you have I'm, to, bro. If you've never been, that's like, you have to. It's like the Grand Canyon. If you get a chance, yeah, you got to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Maybe, maybe I will. I don't know. We're tossing the ideas around. Uh, you do stand up is the question. If you were asked to do, we're going to have Rihanna come out, hit us with three songs, and then she's going to stop and look at the crowd and say, you know what? As much as I love singing, as much as it matters, we all need some laughter at times like this. How about some laughter? Then she goes into some light background music and you pop up to do like Four minutes of your favorite boom, boom, boom. You can't go on after Rihanna. I'm sorry. <laughs> Even if she's the one saying, we need some no, laughter. No, 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 no. You, you, you can't do it. Uh, she comes out and does three songs, and then you're going to come tell jokes. It, it, it ain't going to work. The crowd's going to be up here, and then you got, you know, forget uh, it. Her last if I, song. If I, no, if anything, you open up for her. She does stay. You know, stay at the end. Of the, she goes, I want you to stay. And she fades it out. And then you go, I will, Rihanna. What's going on, L.A.? <laughs> by the way, we're all getting robbed by the zombies as we're here <laughs> hanging out right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So I yeah, think you could so do it. I you could know. do it. And I Kevin Hall could do it. Think that would be sick, dude. Yeah, I wonder how comedy would play in the middle of a football game. Although I don't know. I, I did uh I don't me and sports don't get along, you know. After I did that uh after I did that thing on uh, ESPN. Yeah, yeah. Like we talked about last week. <laughs> they railed me because I didn't know nothing. Yeah, you know, I mean the more I thought about it, you know, there is a certain amount you should know as a man about Certain sports, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on, bro. What am I doing? X and O in it during a during a three minute segment? It's a little stuff like Notre Dame needs two teams to lose in the top four to kind of sneak in, which they probably won't. But is Georgia really as good as they are, even if they beat the Alabama? You know, like this. Oh man, man, nah, now you're a better bullshitter than I am. But listen, if they talk <laughs> soccer, I'd be like, hey, what are we in Italy? Shut it down with the soccer. <laughs> I stopped watching after Shep messing. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shit, Madison. Was he on the Cosmo? Was he oh, on the yeah, Cosmo? The beautiful <laughs> curly hair. Oh, God. It was a perm. Soccer player with a perm goalie. By the way, you uh, played soccer. Is there the same camaraderie uh, with the team, with the goalie? Is it this equal, or is it kind of like the field goal kicker in football? Like, hey, you're the goalie, yeah, you know. Or is it the same? I'm getting a lot of static from that collar that's hitting that microphone. Oh, man. All right. The goalie is not like the kicker. The goalie is more like kind of the centerpiece of the team. Uh, okay. The ki- You know, because the goalie's out there the whole game. The kicker comes out every, what, two or three a half, you know, maybe two or three times a half he comes out. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, no, the goalie's part of the team. There is a camaraderie in soccer that, you know, when any, any team sport, you're going to have, you know, cohesion between the players. Uh, and I, I felt that when I was playing soccer, uh, you know, goofing around, practical jokes, that type of stuff. Um, Did you guys shower? Yeah, what, no. No? Not, yeah, I was not a big shower guy. You yeah. know, like... I'm sorry. I'm it's, it's I'm not comfortable showering um, in a group of fifteen guys. It's just we did it in college ho- college hoops <clears throat> all the time. And there was a guy, there was a guy on my team. He was one of the funniest guys I ever knew. I don't know if I could can I say the name. We'll edit it. Right? He was uh, from Long Island too. Funny black guy, and he was on the team uh, point guard. And when we would be showering, he would always do. He's a couple years older than me. He would ask me questions while we're showering, but while he was asking me questions, he would he would suds up his private parts, and he'd be down there like rubbing it as he's going. So what's going on, Petey, with you? You know, like, and then he'd go, "What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Like, like you're fucking with me, you know?" And uh, it would just be fifteen guys naked, laughing with their flip flops on, laughing at Petey getting his balls busted in the shower. <laughs> See, I, I Did they feel, even do that listen, now, guys? Did, did they still shower? <laughs> the men still shower like that? I, I don't know if they got private stalls now or <laughs> or or what they got. <laughs> but for, but for me, I feel like the guy in the shower, the guy in the shower that's cracking jokes. Yeah. Is the guy who's the most comfortable with his own private parts? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that was him. That was him. Yeah, he yeah. was like, it's like when you watch those NFL uniforms. Some of those guys, I mean, interviews in the locker room. You see them walking around in the background, like they're in in their bathroom. I wouldn't even walk around my wife like that sometimes, <laughs> bending over with nothing on. <laughs> Shit, <laughs> it's unbelievable. But that's just that, that's the lifestyle, right? It's like whatever playing. Oh man, I guess if you grew up in that environment, team sports, team shower. Once you get to the NFL, it's like you know, it's part of the part of the deal. But my God, I mean, it's just I, when I get in the shower, I like to think and like kind of. I can't fucking go in there and have a guy next to me going, "Where are you going to dinner tonight?" Oh. Hey, I'm shampooing my hair. <laughs> Everybody does that when you're done too. You still stand in there, and let the water hit your neck, and just cross your arms like this and just chat. Oh yeah, it was a good game today. You were great. Yeah, you too. Oh, That's God. the last time I did it. I think, man. You know, last time I yeah. ever showered. With, and yeah, man. I don't know. But the, by the way, not to get current eventy, but I don't know if you heard about this. This um guy who swam in an Ivy League swimmer. Uh, he swam on a, I forget what, he's in college now. For the first three years of his college career, he was a man, and he was on the swim team, and he was real good. He was second team, all Ivy League. Between junior and senior year, he transitioned to a woman, and now he just broke, like, the world woman record of some crazy shit by, like, 12 seconds. He's like a dolphin <laughs> among sunfish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tearing it up, you know? You know, like, uh, Kevin was good, but Karen is unbelievable. <laughs> now, of I'm course asking, he is. <laughs> well, I just want to know. I saw a picture, you know, long hair now. I, I, by the way, I don't even know what constitutes uh 
official transition. Do you, could you just grow your hair long and get press ons? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Like, if is there a requirement? Right. That you must go through, whether it be uh, hormonal, you know, medication or a sex change or whatever it might be. Or is, is there, just, a, or is it just like you're saying, I'm putting on a bikini? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> that's it, man. I'm feeling that side of me. So, uh, and my last question is do, does, you know, Kevin, who's now Karen, just get to wrap a towel around the. The, the shoulders and walk in with the flip flops on into the shower. I'm just, I, I don't, don't know. know I'm man. not making I, fun. I, I just don't know the rules. I, I don't know the rules either. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, that would be interesting to know how it all kind of works yes, yes. behind the scenes. Um, where am I going? I with was dipping a toe. That was CNN like for us. <laughs> oh, I know, bro. That was that was a serious of a topic we've breached in the last year, year and a half. Um, by the way, I was performing over the weekend. I just glanced in the front row and happened to catch a cast t-shirt. Nice. I, uh, I just, I just remember just looking down and just catching it. And, uh, I didn't go back to the guy, but, uh, the cast t-shirt is out and about and, uh, and that's, people are loving the people are loving the the fabric. It's, that's, it's, uh, <laughs> I, well, if you ever got, if, I wanted you to know it wasn't like you know this is like a nice cloth. You could you could wax your car with this, you know. But it's a <laughs> some of these people coming out in it and like they're wearing it like it looks well on a Saturday night. <laughs> now, <laughs> bro, they're putting it under a suit jacket. <laughs> now, my buddy Sam, who came to the show out in Boston this weekend. Had a lot of fun. DJ Lou was there, Jimmy from Boston. I'll tell you about that in a sec. But uh, he goes, he goes, yeah, I went to see Sebastian in Pittsburgh. Great show. And he goes, I wore my cast T-shirt. And he goes, not only was no one wearing them, he goes, I thought at least a couple people, but hey, you know. And then he goes, I come here, and there's like a, a sea of them, you know. So it's uh, nice to notice slowly starting to seep into uh, your audience as well. And I'll tell you, bro. It's not like, you know, made money off these and pack them, do what I can, but a little reflection in your Christmas gift for the cash sales. It'll show in your Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. That is funny. I got a good um, Christmas idea. Good family one we got, Jackie and I thought of. We'll see. And bro, All I right. know I got your All message, right. by the way, last cast. It was a little off-putting, but it sounded like you were barely celebrating Christmas on a personal level this year. You're like, it's a little tweaked. I don't know. So if you if we're not doing the exchange, it's fine. This is still uh, something coming. Uh, no, away. no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll do the exchange. for for. Uh, I just put up the Christmas tree yesterday. Actually, I put it up. Last week, and we have like a half-assed ornament, like, you know, I was leaving town, and the kids were kind of half putting the ornaments on, but last night, we did a beautiful ornament unveiling. Got to give it up to Lana here. Went out, got a bunch of ornaments that really pertain to each of us to nice. put up on the tree. This is the first year that we've actually had the kids, both of them, put ornaments up on the tree. And uh, add a little oh, wine last night, some sushi, and uh, that's that's what Christmas is all about, man. It's all about the kids. A little Dean Martin playing in the background. He's nah, I had just like had just like a like a variety of Christmas songs, and uh, Lana brought out these little elf shoes. I put those on with a little uh, Santa hat. Uh, Caruso had a little elf hat on, and uh, it was good. We had a good time. Um, what the hell else? I had something I had to bring to you. Do you got anything on your list there? Uh, well, yeah, just a couple things to talk about. I mean, like I said, those guys came to the show, but, um, Sadie and Jackie came with me to Boston. Um, you know, we had a great time and all, but Sadie <clears throat> was coming to see, because the club is in the hotel, so she was going to come down and watch me for the first time ever. Now, I know Serafina is a little younger. I'm sure she's like looked to the side and like seeing you, but like, do you feel like she's like really got a grasp of like what's going on yet? 
Yeah, she went to the show in Denver, and she. when I asked her, do you know what Daddy does for work? She goes, Daddy gets on stage and makes people laugh. So she knows the concept. I don't know. She doesn't know what the hell I'm saying up there, that, but she knows what Daddy does. That's okay, because Sadie's at the age now where if she says, I'm not funny, it's like, she means it like she's no. I'm like I know funny, and I'm watching you, and you're not. You know, it, like if that was the case, I mean, I, that's that's why I was nervous. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I was really nervous, bro. And I get up there, so I got her in the green room with Jimmy from Boston and DJ Lou and Jackie. She's having a blast hanging out. You know, it features up. I sneak her over and show her like if you look over there, you can you know. And uh, by the way, we all took a photo together. A few photos in the green room. Me, Jimmy from Boston, Lou, and everyone. Jimmy from Boston posted the photo with me, him, and Sadie and Lou without authorization, guys. What you take? I don't see a problem. Neither did Jackie. I'm what like, you... what if I didn't like the angle, the light on my kid? Oh. I, I don't, I don't. Oh, with the kid. With the oh, kid. Okay. The kid. Yeah, you know, it's a 50-50 there. <laughs> I, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming well, from. Well, but Jackie was like, I, I uh, Jackie goes, guy, I post photos with Sadie all the time. Jimmy comments, and I go, I know, I'm just busting balls. So it's just busting balls. But anyway, so I go up. And uh, they're in the back. And now we had gone to the Paul Revere house that day in Boston, you know, the old house where you walk around. So right away, you know, I'm having fun with the audience with some poinsettias. And uh, uh, so I got to say, bro, because it's just so funny in Boston, there were poinsettias the first night on the stage. And the second night, they weren't there. And yeah. I go, oh, I wonder what happened to the poinsettias. And this, the guys in the front row, they leaned down. And they, they, they took them down because they couldn't see. So they lean down below their feet and they drop them back on the table. Like, there you point, Sadis. I'm like, only in Boston. You guys just rip the fucking plants right off the... <laughs> but, you know, so I see Sadie laughing. And then I go into the Paul Revere house and she's laughing. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is... So uh, well, you're, 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 yeah. pick, you're picking out her laugh? No, I know where I sat them. I sat them in the way, way back. And I just happened oh. to see a light on her a little. And she's all giggly, you know? So then about 15 minutes in, I say to the crowd, my wife and daughter in the back, my kids never seen me before, and I'm more nervous than the first time I did the Tonight Show. Uh, and then uh, I said, but, you know, we got to get a little blue. So about two minutes after that, I'm like just about to start a bit. I'm not even looking over there. I just look over. I go, now would be a good time, Jack. She's over there. <laughs> my buddy said, just like that, Jackie grabbed Sadie. He goes, okay, let's go. I was, boom, F-bombs start coming. <laughs> What is this, Rampa room? Get the kid out. <laughs> I would be like going to see, uh, you know, you're going to see someone like Kinnison. And he's like, oh, my eight-year-old's here tonight, so we're going to keep it PG. No, get the kid out of here. I paid the, whatever I paid. I like how you, you gave her a little taste of clean daddy and then said, it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But it was fun, man. It was really fun. And I was telling my sister... Because we stayed, the hotel room was nice, but we just got one big room with two beds. And my sister's big in the hotel business. And she's always like, I, you know, I hear you guys on the cast talking about stuff. If, if you ever have any ideas that you think could make the hotel experience better, I always want to hear them. I came up with a new one, bro. You tell me. Now, oh, at yeah. night, if you don't have, which a lot of people you can't afford or a lot of hotels don't have a, a availability for a one-bedroom suite. You, know, you get these bedrooms where you got your kids in the bed next to you and you're like at the mercy of when they go to bed. Either you keep them up late because you want to watch TV or like my sister said, oh, I know what you're talking about. I'm underneath my uh, blanket with a Kindle when my kid was little trying to. I go, what you got to do is like hospital rooms when they have the curtain with the patients, something classy that goes along dark <laughs> velvet curtain, slide it. <laughs> Put the TV on. Kids are on the left. We're on the right. You know. So check in. Do you have? Do you have any one bedroom suites? We don't. All right. Do you have this? Do you have double beds with the slide curtain? Yes, we do. <laughs> Fucking bro, this shit's gonna take off. <laughs> Oh God, I love this idea, man. I, I think what so. What a beautiful, what a beautiful idea. Good night, kids. Flip 
boom. And now you got the vape pen so you can blow weed in bed. No one's smelling it. Oh, God, everybody's winning. Double headphones. <laughs> Shit. I'm telling you, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Bro, I, don't you get oh, tired man. of us being not only funny, but like just more groundbreaking than most? I hear, <laughs> I hear clips of other podcasts, like I, I'm presuming they're playing their funniest moment. And I'm like, <laughs> that's like, we edit that. That's how not funny. That's not <laughs> That would be a take that out, Lou. <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! Oh man! It's funny. Yeah. So, so what's up, bro? You got some big shows coming up, by the way. In the big uh, shows, New York. That's something you want to talk about, though, huh? No, I. I not that I want to talk about that. I want to talk about. Um, had some turbulence on the flight. A lot, a lot of turbulence uh, this past weekend, right? And my question is, if you had a guy in the cockpit that used to fly jet planes for the military, and then you put him in a cockpit of a either a commercial airliner or a private aircraft, if he started to feel turbulence, excuse me, do you think he could avoid the turbulence with his pilot skill set? Meaning, if he felt turbulence, he's like, oh, I know what to do here. And then just jack the plane up or something where he doesn't have to go through it. Do you think they would, they yeah. would have a different level of skill to get you through turbulence without the plane shaking? That's an interesting question. I mean, first of all, yeah, the guy can easily get out of the turbulence. But considering what this guy used to fly and where he used to fly, he, he probably don't even know he's in turbulence, right? Like, he's used to avoiding <laughs> bombshells and shit that someone's got to tap him on the shoulder and go, yo, Bill, this thing's rocking all over the fucking place. I know you're, I know you're used to flying and shit like this, but my espresso is going all over the fucking tray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, oh. you know, and like, the, 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 this is like, I don't even know what to equate this is. This is like you going from the garden to doing a coffee shop and then someone coming up to you at the coffee shop and going, can you keep it cleaner? You know, I, I used to play, you know, and I, I'm not saying that, and I don't mean it's like a downgrade from what he used to do. I just mean the boredom level, the boredom level for him composed to what, you know, he he's. Yeah, to. yeah. No, I, I, I get probably, you there. He's probably looking for turbulence just to excite him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I hear you. I'm just wondering, when you get a pilot in the cockpit, is it like getting a bad driver on a taxi where, you know, when you're in a taxi cab or an Uber and they keep braking and, you know, you, you know a guy who rides the brake a lot? Yeah. You know, where you keep, you get nauseated in the back. Yeah, I wonder yeah. if that's the same thing for a pilot where the way he flies could be more nauseous than another pilot. You know what I'm saying? Right. Is it yeah. the way he's flying the plane where you go, oh, who's flying today? Man. Oh, Justin? Oh, did, oh, this guy moves the plane back and forth like oh, he's in a, on a, you know? When he, you ever see him make a turn, you feel like you're falling out the fucking window. I mean, <laughs> yeah. this guy puts the wing to the test. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good question, because up until now, I've always just judged a landing. Like, when we land, I'd be like, that guy sucked. I mean, holy shit, though, we're going to go through the hangar, you know? Um, yeah. But... I do know, like, I've been on planes long enough that I've seen other flyers go, like, it'll be in turbulence, and you'll have a guy next to you go, you know, find a different altitude. And I'm like, I hear you, you know? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I don't know. Did your guy say, hey, it's a little rocky. We're going to go a little higher. We're going to go a little lower. I ain't hearing nothing. I ain't hearing nothing in the back. I'm just like, okay, we're starting to move. So, you know, we're you lean over and go, guy, are you trying to get out of this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I start I start playing flight school in my head. We're, we're like, leveled off, I'd say, at maybe, let's say, 15,000 feet. And 
and and we're sitting there for about 10 minutes, you know? I don't know if you've ever come in. To me, a plane should come from whatever, 40,000 feet and gradually come in and land. Not come from 40, go to 17 and stay there for 10. And then, why, why are we staying here? Why didn't you just time it so you could drop it and keep descending, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's why? like you're taking surveillance shots <laughs> on a spy mission. Why Why are we doing 300 miles an hour over the fucking Target and Macy's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I think, because the lower you go, and again, I, I haven't done research, but I'm just assuming the lower you go, the more dense the air is, the more turbulent you get, right? The higher you yes. go, the thinner the air is. That's why and private jets go real high usually. They go yeah, high in okay. commercial. Yeah, but now we're down to seventeen thousand feet, and yeah. we ain't a big plane, right? Right. It's not like it's like a United at, at seventeen. Th this is like a an eight passenger jet, and we're getting tossed <laughs> around, and I'm ready to go. Bring it back up. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I mean, on one hand, though, like you got a stunning view of the city you're coming into, though, right? I don't know. You view when you're about to vomit on your lap, you don't give a shit about looking at farmland. Now, uh, now what's, what, what's the deal when you fly private, though? Aren't these kind of like questions like, you know, I was on the one plane the one time with the guy and he knew the pilot. He would go, Tommy, well, why are we coming in so low? Do you just like nothing? I didn't even ask because after the flight, I was so nauseous. I didn't oh. want to like have a conversation with anybody. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I just got off, just got off the plane. But this time around, <laughs> I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask why are we coming in early? We're coming in early here, bro. Right. Uh, what if he's like, we're beating, we're beating private jet traffic. If we stay high, we come in. We're gonna get stuck behind Paul Getty or a couple of actors. <laughs> we come in low, right over the truth, the treetops, man. We cut the line. <laughs> oh, but what I'm doing now, and this is this is not uh -huh. advised, but uh -huh. what helps me because a lot of times we're flying in day of show, and I get really screwed up. My I, my equilibrium gets really screwed up. So what I've been doing is I've been laying down during the the landing. There's like a bed in the back. I lay down during oh, the landing. Yeah, so now yeah. this 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 could be dangerous. Where if you hit an air pocket. You know, you could fly off the bed, hit the ceiling, but oh, I'm yeah. ready to, willing to take that gamble because when I lay down, I don't feel the the nauseam at all. Right. right. Wow. If I'm up in the, if I'm up in the seat, I'm feeling it. If I'm laying down on the bed, I don't feel nothing. So that's my new move. Well, what and about? Here's a, oh, yeah. Go I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? Here's my new move. I'm holding on to the mattress. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we're when we're like that's gonna like like. <laughs> right. Like if we hit an air pocket, I'm gonna be able to hold myself down on the bed. Yeah, right. That's the new airline. Look, we saved money on seatbelts, folks. We just realized we got handles to the left and right. Just do a hard <laughs> grip. We'll tell you when we're gonna hit the ocean. Now, you got uh, someone flying with you that before they sit and buckle in, you can maybe do a Frankenstein lay down, buckle over. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you can't get off the bed. Oh uh, no, no. There's just no way. There's no way you could. Do a Frankenstein. There's, there's, there's no seat, but they're all underneath the. It's like the, the, it's like a fake mattress they they put on the seats. It's not like a normal bed. Right. So yeah. that's yeah. that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing there. All right. Biggest show announcement. Um, March twelfth. I'm playing the Paramount Theater on Long Island, baby. That's right. Saturday, March twelfth. I am coming home to Strong Island. I am beyond sight. This is going to be a big one and a very fun one for me. That's March 12th, the Paramount on Long Island. Tickets go on sale this Friday, December 10th. You can get them on, you can go to pcorielli.com to get them. You can go to the Paramount. Um, I'll put up the ticket link. Great Christmas gift, just saying. And everybody who's been coming to the shows the past two or three months, I, I've been having a blast. I can't thank you all enough for coming out. And uh, it's been a ball meeting everybody afterwards, man. Uh, so keep putting this Pfizer shot to the test. I'll see you this Saturday, uh, Minneapolis at the Cedar Cultural Center. Next Friday, December 17th at Sellersville Theater. And then the big one next year. I'm psyched. March 12th, baby. The Paramount Theater on Long Island. Thanks to all the cast listeners, as always, for tuning in. 
later. So, you know, speaking uh, of uh, good. Speaking of nausea, I know I texted you this, but folks, if you haven't caught uh, the Sebastian's uh, what's he, Sebastian's well food done, Network, well done. Um, I just watched the first episode on Food Network with Jackie. It's about fishing. It's hilarious. Uh, it's a great show. It's really, really well done, brother. Seriously, but you, Thank you. getting seasick. I mean, Jackie doesn't laugh that hard that often when we watch TV. We were crying because not only I felt bad for you, but then so, when they went to get you and they were holding you like a, like an old feeble man, you couldn't walk. Holy shit! And it was and Jackie's like, God, that is totally real. Oh my God, it feels so bad. <laughs> And then laying there, still doing the show with your arm <laughs> like this. <laughs> and the guy's, he's, he's holding up a fucking little fish. And you go, 45 minutes out here for that? We couldn't have got that on the dock? <laughs> oh, oh, man, thanks. No, that was that was a brutal, oh. brutal episode. By the way, it's uh, they took it off Food Network. It's off. They what? canceled it. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> they so they got old ladies on there making fucking Brin gingerbread houses that collapse. <laughs> and, and, and and that's off. So here, it, it, let me tell you the story behind this. So <laughs> you sound like you sound like my mother. Oh. What? You're off. D <laughs> <laughs> I'm blown away, man. So listen. Discovery Plus owns Food Network. So the deal was it's going to air on Discovery Plus for seven episodes, and those seven episodes then migrate to Food Network. Then well, then they're going to air the next six on Discovery Plus, and then those six are migrate to, to Food Network. All right. So they, uh, they air on Discovery Plus. One airs on Food Network. The second one airs on Food Network. We get a call. We're moving it off of <laughs> The Food Network. It ain't doing good. We're moving it to the cooking channel. So this thing's living on the cooking channel. So I got demoted for... I go, Jesus, two, two episodes you give it? I mean, let it, let it, let it, you know, breathe a little bit. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, it's gone. It's it's gone. It's on the cooking channel. Uh, and it's what? still on Discovery Plus, but I was a little little uh, taken aback by the fact that two episodes, they launched this thing. I'm like, eh, you're telling me, and I've seen what's on the network. You're talking yeah. old ladies and gingerbread houses, but I don't know. Is that the demographic? And, they, and, they, and I come on, I'm like, I'm laying on the floor on a fishing boat. Are they sitting there going, oh, come on. Let's, let's go get to the fish. I want to see how it's made. <laughs> uh, I, I thought know. it was great. And then the second one, we were trying to put the espresso machine back together with that guy. Oh, yeah. that, guy was a, that guy was a trip, man. <sighs> that, that, we could have did, did the whole episode with that guy. That guy was uh, a really interesting guy, and he had made but, for yeah, good I, I uh, thought TV. I got to say, I thought everybody, everybody that I watched – was uh, likable and I liked the Asian guy with the coffee sipping was great. The guys you fished with were very cool. Those two black women that baked food were hilarious. They could have been a whole yeah. episode with you. And then the guy you did the uh, the espresso machine with, you know. Although yeah, you no, did, it was you did the you did the <clears throat> you had the espresso with the dude who's been a barista for thirty years who makes the heart with the foam. Yeah, uh, yeah, which was cool. Um, yeah. And then, um, <laughs> and then, and then you have an espresso with the with the old timer at his house, uh, from his whatever machine in his back, and you go, "This is the best espresso I ever had in my life." And I go to Jackie, "Oh, if the guy from the barista is watching this, he just made you woman." Of yeah, that wasn't his house. Number one, we were in a we were in a coffee house upstairs in the loft. And oh. number two, uh -huh. and number two, didn't even take it. It was a fake sip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the secrets come out now. You're taking it, it off Food Network. Now we'll tell you the behind the scenes. <laughs> fake, fake sip on the espresso. Just gave the guy. Just gave the guy. You know, and, and he didn't even make it with his own machine. It was, it was all, it was all, they, they, they made it with the coffee house's machine <laughs> and they brought it up. 
<laughs> Next thing you know, you're going to tell me if you panned out, the boat never left the dock. I wasn't happy with the dialogue, so I faked the whole seasick. <laughs> Oh wow. oh wow! man, damn it, bro. So, well, anyway, yeah, it's gonna, you know, whatever was happy with it, right? The uh, discovery still maybe do more on that if you want. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's not that. I'm getting a phone call. That's why you can't see me. Um, yeah, you can't. Um, Discovery Plus is still on. We still have a shot to possibly do a third season, but who knows, man. Right now, we're just uh, concentrating on finishing up the end of the year and uh, and having a nice Christmas yes. with the family. What's up What's up for uh, Christmas on your end? Are you uh, you local, or what are you doing? Local, man. I got some few more shows, and then December 17th, my last show is at a place where I did my last special, and it's called a little place called Sellersville in Pennsylvania about, I don't know, hour outside of PA. And this guy who booked me found it, and I did it last year, and they got a little inn connected to it. And the little inn, not connected, like right next to it, same ownership. It's got a great little bar, low ceiling, and uh, I don't know, for the past three months, I'm like, I already made my reservation. I'm doing that show. I'm solo. You know, I just go. I do my show. Uh, and then I'm going to go down, have a few beers in that bar, go to sleep. And then when I drive home, hit the Christmas channel and all Christmas, all the way home. Oh, little Johnny nice. Mathis and a lot of Dean Martin gay. Oh, is that beautiful? <laughs> Now, listen, I got to tell you something, dad to dad, and uh, I'm not trying to trivialize anything that's happened uh, out there in the other schools, So, but you know, we are a comedy show. I just want to walk you through it. Lockdown at my daughter's school yesterday. Oh, shit. What happened? No, bro. I get a, <clears throat> get a, mass, a message from the superintendent, um, voicemail, telling us that, <clears throat> you know, not to get too much in detail, but they found a pocket knife on a kid. Uh, and, you know, they were detaining him for a pocket knife, which I appreciate. But the school went on hour and 20 minute lockdown. Then they sent a message today to let us know there's going to be extra cops at the school today. Um, and I'm just I'm loving the response for a pocket knife. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just way to be on it. When I, when I was in high school, my brother Dummy as he is, uh, a friend of his wanted to borrow a BB gun because they were having a squirrel situation on the property. So my brother brings it to school. He's walking through the parking lot in high school with a fucking what looks like a rifle just holding a BB gun. And they swarmed on him. So I think this was no more than that. But the response was fantastic. And as a dad, bro, the minute you hear lockdown, you you just want to get in the car, boom, and go there. And if they're like, the guy's inside. We're waiting for SWAT. Give me your gun. I'll go. You know, like you just, you go psycho. I mean, it's like, it's a, anyway. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. God, thank God this hasn't happened at my kid's school. But as you're telling me this story, I'm wondering if you're ex-military, right? Let's say you're ex-Navy ex -Navy SEAL. Yeah. And you get a call. School's on lockdown. We got something's happening here. If oh, and your, your, and your kid goes there? And the SEAL's kid goes there, right? <sighs> you picked the does, wrong school. The fuck? Does, this, does the SEAL get his other SEAL buddies and go, we're, we're going in? I mean, just ro rogue? Whoa. Is, is, <laughs> even if they got there at the same time as SWAT, I'd say we're SEALs and SWAT should go, by all means, go in. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get the coffee going out here. <laughs> like a Navy I just got SEAL? A, I think a Navy SEAL with a helicopter coming into the yard to the playground and guys coming out of it. I, Jesus. Oh. I mean... It, that should just be the response. This, it, it's a nationwide bulletin. If you're going to come to school with any type of weapons and you get caught, we're calling in the we're calling in the military. We're calling in the military. They're coming. That's it. Th through the roof, through the windows. <laughs> That's it. The, 
I was telling Sadie about the Navy SEAL the other day. I'm like, they land out of helicopters into the water, and they never even come up. They do a switch into scuba gear. They're on the <laughs> beach. You don't even know they're there. You're rubbing suntan lotion on you, and they're stabbing your fucking husband. <laughs> 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 USA, baby. DJ, uh, Jimmy from Boston got, <clears throat> as a gift from a fan of the cast, he says his name at the beginning of the cast, two tickets. First of all, the guy gave Lou a carton of cigarettes, uh, gave D D uh, Jimmy from Boston two tickets to see the Patriots January 2nd, good seats. He's Jeez. a soldier in Afghanistan, and he's got all of his guys in Afghanistan, listening to the cast. I mean, holy shit, bro. I mean, bro, we're hitting all corners of the world here. Shout out, shout out to the United States military, by the way. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I mean, just fascinated with that whole life. I mean, military, they, just, just like anything military that comes out as far as a movie is concerned. Like, uh, I love when the military goes in in a movie and tries to get a hostage. I forget the name of the movie. I think it was 12-something or whatever, where Navy SEALs go into, like, a, like you're saying, yeah. water, water surrounding it, right? I remember one part of the movie. I forget the movie. Guy sitting there, like a, like a, like a security guard looking at, at the water. And a sniper hits this guy in the head, and there's a seal in the water waiting to catch him so oh. there's no splash. Oh, my <laughs> God, bro. <laughs> Holy shit. <sighs> it. Oh, my God. Uh, to, to even think of that going, all right, when we shoot him. There's going to be maybe a splash. So I need you as almost a net to catch him and just bring him into the water. <laughs> oh, my. Now, oh, do you think shit. other countries are making their military movies, making their military <laughs> look that good? Like, what, what do you think they make them making ours look good anyway? Like, uh, I, I mean, because uh, we, oh, we look fantastic in our movies, don't we? I mean, just, <laughs> USA. Oh, that's a good one. I like hearing that one, man. Oh, man. By the way, speaking of military and all that, Kim Jong-un, you know, he's one of my favorite topics, right? Leader of uh, North <laughs> Korea. You ready for this? Yeah. I don't, I got mixed feelings about this move. And maybe we can get, we get, rarely get him, get an image up here for the people that watch the video, but you can look it up. I think you've seen it. He wears, Kim Jong-un wears a full yeah. leather. It ties around like a leather trench coat, full black leather. All right, he's known mm -hmm. for yeah. it, and uh, <clears throat> it got so popular with the North Korean men. They all started wearing the full black leather, same one as him. He didn't like that they were all doing his look. He made it against the law <laughs> for a man to wear a black leather trench coat. And here's the best part: if you're wearing it and I don't say anything, and he finds out that you were wearing it, and I didn't, we both go to the fucking prison camp. <laughs> so I got to rat you out, gang. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. <laughs> what? Imagine that. What trying on a nice pair of shoes. The guy shoemaker's like, you like them? Not only do I like them, shut down. No one else ever wearing these fucking wingtips again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man no it's funny what's going on over there even in china yeah. they yeah. were saying that their kids um the government controls kind of what they see on the ipad yeah so if you're chinese the only thing you could play on the on the ipad are like educational games like mathematics, reading, this you can't even access like youtube or anything like that right, right. and they shut it off at a certain point. I mean, can you imagine? Uh -huh. At five o'clock in the afternoon, the iPad shuts down. They can't even use it. It's just this is the picture of XI, whatever, <laughs> waving goodbye. You know, see you tomorrow at noon. <laughs> That's insane. Bro, I know Ooh. that. And they keep a log. If you go over time, the government will call yeah. you up and be like, oh, <laughs> going, what, you know, what are you doing? I'm making dinner. Really? Because your kid's fucking playing Pong behind you on his <laughs> iPad. And we're about to bust down the door. Shut it down. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's not effective. I mean, I'm just saying.
<laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. my God, they're teaching their kids like to take over the world, and we're over here, and then, hey, here, go watch Peppa Pig. I oh. mean, oh God, I don't know. Santa wasn't enough. We had to add Elf on the Shelf. <laughs> Oh, they're bored leading up to Santa. We're going to move the elf around. I never did any of that. Never did any of that shit. You know? So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They can. Oh, now, uh, today, actually, I know we don't get current event but our president was talking to Putin today. Everybody is acting up around the country. <laughs> Everybody's acting up. <laughs> it's time to, if I was a president, I'd literally go on and say, <clears throat> it's time to pull the car over. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like when you're telling the kids to behave in the back and they're not, then your dad pulls over the shoulder. You're like, oh, we're in fucking trouble now. <laughs> no, no, no shit. I just heard something that would, I mean, this is a beautiful idea. You know, there's a lot of smash and grabs. Like a yeah. lot of uh, these these uh, groups are breaking into like a Nordstrom or what have yeah. you and then yeah, running yeah, out. Get your stuff. fire insurance, right, bro? What's your smash and grab insurance? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so. Here's a move that they were saying that they should do is, yeah, break in, right? You can break the windows down. Right. Everybody rushes in to get merchandise. But then there's a gate that comes down, right? Uh -huh. And locks everybody in the store. Like, they can't get out. You know, Love like, it. Love it. Love it. It's a, it's a <laughs> And a nice touch would be the screens on the TV. Paul Materi appears from uh, Bronx Tale and goes, now nah, you just can't leave. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, but the man. fact that you got to do that shit, right? I know. This is what you got to do. You got to fight fire with fire, man. Come on. Oh, my God. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. I know, unbelievable. I know, I know. Crazy times, bro. <laughs> uh, so, what anyway. Else we got here? Hold on. What else? What else you got? Uh, I, I feel like, like I got a story I'm missing here. Take your time. Take your time. No, what do you got though? Uh, nothing really. It was a big thing, you know. You know, I mean, I could talk, but <laughs> if you, if you're thinking of something, I don't want to start. Then you go, I got it. No, no, I gotta. I'm 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 going to this uh, orthopedic today to take a look at my back, figure out what's going on with these legs still. Legs I saw still more. I saw another photo of you with more cups now. There was yeah, I did the cup. Did the cupping. And, you know, did, didn't work all that well. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go now and see what the hell's going on with this orthopedic. He's gonna take a look at the MRI. Hopefully, we'll get to the bottom of this. Um, what else did I have, uh, doctor wise? Have any other doctor appointments that I'm going on? Going to see a urologist just to get things checked out. Just want to be working at an optimal level here at the age of 48. If I get these legs fixed, I got to tell you, bro, I, you know, I'm, I could possibly play professional sports uh, once i get these legs fixed really that's a well i mean listen that's like saying did you except for all that did you enjoy the play mrs lincoln you ever hear that expression <laughs> you know, the, the legs it's a big thing it's not like you go listen you know once this pinky finger is not sprained anymore oh, yeah. <laughs> uh no nah, oh, listen yeah. i wish you the best but do you truly like you ever see like when people get interviewed in their 40s and 50s and they go i never felt better in my life i always wonder is that like is this just saying that, or do you really feel that? Like, I, I think we brought this up once before in the cast. I don't, I, I don't remember what I felt like when I was twenty. I wish I could feel that now. I go, oh fuck, you know, that was it. Yeah, it, I feel no, good. I, yeah, I, I know how I feel now, and I know how it felt to not feel. To feel good is to not feel at all, right? So yes. for me, it's like when you were twenty-one, you didn't feel nothing. You just did it. You know, there was no like, oh my knee is, or or my man, my hamstring. It was none of that. None of that. It was like you were you were loose. Now I get out of bed, right, and my feet like I sore. Why are my feet sore? All right. I just slept. <laughs> it's the weirdest shit. I was putting an angel in today for Christmas outside, and I got a little handheld sledgehammer. It's not that big. And I do three bangs, and all of a sudden there's a pain in my wrist. I can't even hold it. And I drop it. And then I shake it out and I pick it up. The pain's gone. What the fuck? What was that? <laughs> what? You, you know, just a little coming. Say so you chalk it up to, I don't know. It's, it's the craziest shit, man. But it never happened when we were younger, right? But I feel good. No. 
the hair Never is happened. the key though. The hair is the key to everything. Is I don't want to go. F- I don't want to go gray too soon, man. I want to slow fade into gray. <laughs> I'm surprised. I mean, your hair is like jet black still, and no, and you're uh, no. well. I mean, yeah, there's there's some hints of gray, but I mean, I, I'm over here and I'm I'm almost all. And I don't want to call it gray because I don't think it is. I think it's You're a not. silver plat. It's a platinum. You got a, a lot platinum. of dark still. You got. I'm looking yeah, at at least a solid five more dark. Five more dark. Nah. You know, it's like you know. It's in the the lighting is 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 where you start seeing the gray. But yeah, it's it's, it's it is what it is, bro. We're getting, is. We're getting older. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> By the way. What's your take on this? Because uh, Jimmy from Boston was at the show. Had a great time hanging out with him again. Just a sweetheart of a guy. So <clears throat> I was calling I, I call him Jimmy sometimes, you know? And for the listeners that don't know, that's not his real name. He's got a job, and he doesn't want people to know. And Jackie basically is telling me it's a little bouncy that I'm not calling him his real name. She calls him his real name. And uh, so I don't know. Do you... Uh, is, it, is that like calling Jack Tripper if you do the show Three's Company with him? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not John Ritter. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. I think you got to go with his real name here, and not and not the uh, the pseudonym. Is that what you call it? A pseudonym? Yeah, or the cast name. Well, is a pseudonym a fake name? Do you know the definition of a pseudonym? What what that is? It's basic. <laughs> I think I think that's what it is. I think that's what it is. Do you ever throw a word out there that you think is the word? But after you put it out there, you go, oh, I don't even think that belongs. <laughs> it, like, like if, if you weren't my friend yeah. and you were just a stranger and I threw pseudonym out there, right. I wouldn't go, is that the right word? I would leave it out there and in my head go, <laughs> oh, man, is that where that should go? Would you ever, like, call yourself out on a word that you think that doesn't belong in the sentence? No, not unless I knew the person, I think. I would. I try to know my audience, too. Sometimes I say a word, and I'm like, I don't think I use that right, but I definitely know he don't fucking know if I use it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I just wowed him with that one, no matter what. <laughs> or do you ever use a word, do you ever use a word, and depending on the audience you're speaking to, if you're in a group of people, let's say two other guys, and you know that they're less intelligent than you, and you throw a word out. Do you go, oh, man, these guys don't understand that? Like, do you ever use a word and look at someone and go, they don't know what that means? Yeah, yeah not that. Well, sometimes I throw a word out, and I'll be like, they, they're they judging me now for using that word, you know? Like, oh, so so what do they think they're, they're saying in their head? Oh, does this guy think he's smart? Yeah, what are you, a fucking Oxford grad? Tone it down for doing your state, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. You try. You ever do that with your friends growing up? You try to incorporate a big vocabulary, and they usually oh, just yeah. shut it down. You know? Oh, they shut it right the yeah. hell down. They're like, "It's not even you, bro." Exactly. Exactly. There was a uh, shit. Something I wanted to just say to you. I forgot. Ah, shit. <laughs> oh, uh, so so uh, two days. Uh, I, I think I can say this legally now. My garbage. Um. I guess I wasn't paying for it and I didn't realize it. So a couple of weeks ago, they took about a month ago, they took my can. I have no more garbage can, right? So uh, I look into getting the garbage service that everyone has in town. It doesn't just come with your taxes. I thought it did. So yeah. then I go and I have a dump by me and I say to Jackie, you know what? I'm going to do like my brother-in-law does. He just goes and pays and dumps it at the dump. You know, you throw it in the big pit. I'm like, it'll be fine. I'll go there with Sadie once a week. It'll be a thing. So last week, uh, I usually take it on Tuesday. And then last week, I only had two bags. And it was like the, um, Monday night. And I'm in my garage. And the guy next door to me, he owns a college house. And he put his garbage out. And I'm like, hey, I drive all the way there. So I literally waited till about 11 o'clock at night when I walked Duke. 
And I, I go down to the end of my driveway holding two fucking gallons of kitchen fucking garbage. And when no one's looking, I run across the street, flip up his cans and throw it in there, you know? Oh, what a move. What a move, bro. But then next day, the garbage guy doesn't come till about 8.30, 9 o'clock. I'm biting my fingernails the whole time, <laughs> afraid he's going to. I mean, nobody does this. Nobody walks back out and flips open their garbage and checks for shit. But what if he did? And he sees, what the fuck is, opens up Corey Ellie's mail. Would like, you would you be upset if that I would, was you? I, first of all, I would think the guy had been doing it for a long time. I wouldn't think it was the first time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd be like, don't mix your garbage with my garbage guy. No, no, yeah. I don't like that. I, I don't like that move. Where I, I've seen that happen where my bin, I look out in the morning, and my bin was closed, and now my bin's open with a big piece of lumber hanging out of it. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't I don't think you could marry the garbage. What? I don't think you could marry the two garbages. I I, I don't think you could do that. I think you, you yeah. gotta you gotta you gotta start taking it to the dump. No, well, no, I know. I just did it one time, but Jackie's like she's like, Are you crazy? I go, I got lazy. I got lazy. It was too easy. It was too easy not to do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Anyway, man. Um it's a good hang. I think we're right. Yeah, good hang, good hang. I uh, I think uh, our time here is up on the Pete and Sebastian show. Got to, again, thank the listeners for uh, for tuning in to the uh, to the Pete and Sebastian show. Hopefully, I'll have more to talk about. I, I was again with these calls. God damn it! No, um, it was fun though, man. It was a lot of laughs. I had a good time. All right, bro. Nice to see you. Good hanging, man. Yeah.